What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Today is the first day I'm going to the gym, but this video is going to be 13 things I wish I knew at age 13. <laughs> So the kickoff number one is not just about the quantity of your training and it is not just about the quality of your training. It is the combination of both. When I was younger, I was obsessed with calculating how many hours I was training or how many hours I should be training or how many hours pros were training each day or per week or per month or whatever and trying to just focus on the numbers. What I should have done was just try to get as many quality training hours as I possibly could while listening to my body at the same time. You wanna train as much as possible but sometimes a five hour training session a day might not be as effective as a 45 minute intense session. Number two, the best player at age 13 won't necessarily be the same player that goes pro, or even be the best player at age 15. Anybody can pass anybody with training and hard work, or anybody can stay at the top with training and hard work. This game of soccer is a marathon, it's not a sprint. So rehab has been going great. I've been progressing into walking, some very light biking, some stretching, so it's going well, I'm just icing it up. And it's all about just that constant progression. But yeah, I'll put what I've been doing for the last five days on the screen right now for those of you who are interested. Anyway, number three is that the actual sets, the reps, the rest, the drills, the exercises, all those little minute details don't matter as much as actually just staying dedicated to whatever you're going to do, progressing, and then not quitting. The worst workout that you can stick to and do is better than the best workout plan that you don't stick to. So that's number three. Number four is that I wish I would have subscribed to become elite. I'm just kidding, but you should still subscribe. Number four is to not worry about trying to lock into a position. Very, very few professional players have played the exact same position their entire life. Now, I'm not saying that you must be able to play every single position on the field, but it will help you if you can also play right back or right mid or left back or do a few other things. So in general, just learn the game, learn the different positions and be flexible, be able to do a lot. Because at 13, I was really worried if I was gonna be a center forward or a left winger and it turns out I'm a right back. <laughs> Still got it? A coach might have like 25 people on a team. So if you divide up his time evenly between all 20 to 25 players, that's like four to five percent of his time spent on each player. So always have other mentors, other coaches, other teammates giving you critique and feedback and relying on other people to help develop your game just because the coach has so much on his plate already. Diversify. Number six, I wish I would have known how powerful of a tool it was to study soccer, to study a high level of soccer, to watch these EPL games, but not just to root and just to cheer for the goals, but to watch the players in my position or any position for that matter and study how they play, how they move and how they touch the ball. That is invaluable for a player to do and I wish I would have understood that as a 13 year old. Number seven. The pros don't do any different drills or exercises any different than what you guys do. It's the same stuff you guys see what I do. They just strive for the absolute perfection of those very simple drills. For example, when we're doing a passing drill, we're working on every single touch, making it perfect, that perfect ball coming in, making the perfect touch, the perfect distance from us, and then playing the perfect ball with the perfect weight on the right side of their body so that they can play the perfect touch and then the perfect pass after that. We're striving for perfection. Number eight is that games at 13 don't matter. Mistakes will be forgotten, losses will be forgotten. Just go out, have fun, try that step over, try something new, and don't take it so seriously. What you should take seriously is the actual development as you as a player, which really takes place in team trainings and in your own individual trainings.
Number nine, I wish I didn't get so frustrated when I couldn't do something. Like when I was learning how to kick a long ball, learning how to do my first around the world, I'd get so frustrated thinking that I was doing something wrong. When in reality, I just needed to build up those intense training hours and develop the muscle memory so that I could repeatedly do this trick or this technique or whatever I wanted to do over and over again. I wish that I knew that these pros also went through the same exact struggle when they were learning all these tricks or these techniques for the very first time and that I wasn't like a bad player or that I had something missing. Number 10, the best way to balance school and soccer is to stay busy. Always be doing something to better your game or to get ahead in school. Once you've done everything you can, then it's time to reward yourself with relaxation, such as video games, TV, hanging out, chilling out, doing whatever. But the order needs to go school, soccer, then relaxing. What you need is a mini teleprompter. <laughs> right behind it. Number 11 is that there is no best way to train or work out. Every single different type of training or different type of workout has different pros and cons. For example, a very slow paced technical session where all you really are focused on is just improving that technique is a very, very different style of workout from a very high intensity, game realistic style of training where all you're doing is trying to replicate a real game. And both training styles are terrific and you should implement both in your training regimen. The same goes for workouts. A raw strength workout where you're doing lower reps and heavy weight and kind of taking a long rest time is great for developing raw strength and force into the ground but it's completely different than that circuit style CrossFit high intensity workout where it's dripping in sweat and it's all muscular endurance and cardio and they both work on different things which are both needed for soccer. There's no best way at all. You need everything. Honestly, I'm just kind of running out of places to film inside my house. Number 12 and this is a huge one. Every single pro that you see today has faced some setbacks in their life. Whether it's getting cut from teams, rejected, politics, injuries, whatever, every single pro has faced many setbacks in their life. So when a setback happens to you, don't get emotional, don't read into it, and just focus on your development over the long term. I really wish I knew that as a 13 year old. I was gonna ride on the swing, but I don't know about my growing with that thing now. <laughs> Lastly, and I think most importantly, number 13, nobody really knows your true potential. Nobody knows how far you're gonna make it in soccer, if you're gonna become a pro, if you're gonna fizzle out by 18. Nobody knows. They do their best guess, but nobody knows 100% for sure. I had so many coaches, so many people, so many other parents and players, and even just my friends tell me that it was dumb for me to try to play in college. It was dumb for me to try to go D1. It was dumb for me to try to go play for the San Jose Earthquakes U23 team. It was dumb for me to drop out of school and it was dumb for me to try to get a pro contract because it would never would happen. But yet I did all of that. So my one piece of advice, my main piece of advice is never let anybody put any limitations on what you think you can do. If you think you can go and do it, then go and do it. And if you fail, at least you tried your hardest and at least you know you won't have any regrets that you didn't go for it later on in life. Those things right there, those are the 13 things I wish I knew when I was 13 years old. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.